Okay, Mary. It seems we have everything sorted. Everything has been signed. May I just say how sorry I am to hear about your husband's passing. Yes, well, William had actually been sick for quite some time, and we hadn't really been talking much for about uh, a year. Oh, were you separated? No, we were still together. It's just we gradually grew apart from each other. Pass the gravy. He was quite agonising, really, with those eyes just staring at you, full of judgement. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, thank you for meeting me today, Mary. I'm glad we got everything sorted. Yes, well, thank you very much. Oh, and uh, one last thing. I've been instructed to give you this. William sent this to us shortly before he passed away. I believe it's something personal. I'm sure you want to take it home and read it in privacy. Dear Mary, I trust that you will not let my departure from this world upset you too much, but that you will continue to follow the guidance that I have given you throughout our time together. I'm writing this letter to you to explain to you exactly what Dr. Landy is going to do with me and why I have agreed he should do it. You are my wife and you have the right to know these things. In fact, you must know them. I hope that the fact I am no longer with you will influence you to listen to me through these pages. There I was, with only a few months to live, when Dr. Landy walks in. This was about the time, a few hours before you usually visit me. Ah, William, you're just the person I was looking for. Look, in a few weeks you're going to be dead, correct? And after that, you're never going to hear of yourself again. That is, unless you put yourself in my hands. Now, would you like to hear my proposition? Go on. You see, I've been working on this project for quite a few years to remove the brain from the skull of a human and to keep it alive for an unlimited time after the person is dead. In this case, after you are dead. I don't like it. Let me finish. You see, we'd have an artificial heart pumping your brain with exactly the right kind of oxygenated blood. Just think about it. You'd still be able to observe the world just as you do now. But I wouldn't be able to see or hear. Ah yes, that's what I forgot. I never told you about the eye. You see, I believe we'd be able to keep one of your eyes intact by placing it in a clear plastic case. And when your brain is submerged in a tank filled with a special solution, your eye would float on the surface of the liquid. And that's pretty much it. Uh, one question. Do you honestly think that with my brain sitting in that box, my mind will be able to function just as it does now? I don't see why not. It's the same brain, alive and undamaged. We should be able to keep it alive for years and years. Possibly hundreds of years. Goodbye for now. I'll see you tomorrow. My immediate reaction after he left was, why would I want to be reduced down to a small blob lying in a pool of water? And on top of that, another thing that bothered me was the feeling of helplessness, not being able to do anything. There would also be no going back after that. However, at about midday, my mood began to change. I became less concerned about the unpleasant factor and began to realise how comforting it would be to know that my brain may not necessarily die and that I would constantly be with you and you would always be with me. By the time you were reading this letter, Several days have passed since Dr. Landy has performed the operation. Please go and see him, as I'm sure he'll be keen to show you about how the operation went. And you'll be undoubtedly very glad to see me again. Yours always, William. P.S. Be good when I'm gone. Do not drink. Do not use my money. Do not smoke. Do not use lipstick. And finally, I suggest that you disconnect the telephone as I will not be using it anymore. Now, Mrs. Pearl, don't be too surprised when you see him. It's bound to be a bit of a shock to you. He doesn't look too attractive in his new state. Well, I don't know him for his looks, Doctor. Please take your time when you get inside. He won't know you're there until your face is directly above his eye.
Hello dear, it's me, Mary. It's lovely to see you again. As far as we can tell, he's perfectly conscious and aware of everything. Really? Yes. If he only had the power of speech, he'd be able to have a perfectly normal conversation with you right now. There's absolutely no difference mentally between the William here and the William you once knew back home. Really? I'm quite certain. From now on, Mary's going to look after you all by herself and you've nothing to worry about in the world. When can I have him back, Doctor? Uh, I beg your pardon? I said, when can I have him back? Back in my own house. You're joking. Why would I joke? He couldn't possibly be moved. I don't see why not. This is an experiment, Mrs. Bell. He's my husband, Dr. Landy, and I'm sure he would rather be at home with me than in a hospital room for the rest of his life. Wouldn't you agree? I think we should discuss this in my office. Yes, all right. Mary's leaving now, sweetheart. And don't you worry about a single thing. We're going to get you home just as soon as we possibly can. And listen, dear. From now on, my pet, you're going to do exactly what Mary tells you. Do you understand that? So don't be a naughty boy, will you, my precious? Goodbye, darling. I'm glad to see you looking well again. Isn't he sweet? Can't wait to get him home again.